I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Pichi. Uh, Dr. Pichi uh, is now the president of Thailand Society of Cataract Reflective Surgery. He is also a, a chief of the Reflective Surgery Contact Lens Unit at the uh, Fiji Hospital Ministry of Public Health. And also he is the, uh, uh, the director in chief of many uh, basic center in Thailand. I heard of, personally heard of uh, Dr. Pichi's talk, he's very uh, good and he's very excellent, excellent at anterior segment surgery. So today, uh, his talk for us is the experience of Trinova sinusoid IOL. Dr. Pichi, welcome. Uh, good morning. Uh, and morning. Hello for uh, honor guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to share with you my experience of Trinova sinusoid IOL. This is my financial disclosure. Okay. Or I have the article on the VSY journal uh, about the Trinova. What I have written is my impression uh, that when I implant a Trinova for six months and I got some surprise that I could Highly find the steps on the IL or on the slit lab examination on the first post operative day. When you look in in the slit lamp, or I have to uh, uh, swing the slit uh, through and through to just to see the step uh, that can translate into almost glare or no or no glare or no halo. The eat of characteristics saved my days, saved my life many times because with a slight tilt or a minor of refractive uh, of refractive target. In my very first patient, I end up with minus half a diopter, but the uncorrect visual acuity surprised me is still 2020 or even 2016 with the full range of vision with the, and when me and my colleague did the study about the intraoperative OCT you know, it surprised me that when we compare to any other platform the Trinova or the Aquiva platform in every model come in close contact with the post lit capsule after implanting it, much more than any other uh, IOL or multifocal IOL, implying that uh, it might not uh, guarantee that the PCO will be the least one, but it means that the ELP is very accurate. That's, uh, that's no wonder that this is my choice of multifocal. Let me introduce you a bit about the history of trifocal. We tried to uh, solve the problem in the past that we couldn't achieve the intermediate distance, which we use most. And it comes out that we still have a big amount of light loss. We have uh, the low light distribution that shift the light to the distance rather than near or intermediate when or in, in dim light. And we ha we have faced our uh, a mesopic uh, problem. Uh, a cryotrinova is the next generation. It has a smooth sinusoidal design, the twelve, 12 unique ridge that creates the highest light transmission through all optical diameter. When you compare with any other uh, trifocal, you can see the step. Why right? in trinova? You, you couldn't find any step and or it can translate lovely that or the resolution of or your image is clearer. 92% effective light transmission to the retina is the highest one in the market right now. Trinova has the widest depth of focus. I'll show you how in, in a moment the MTF is excellent in all these 10 and the, it has a outstanding visual outcomes even in mes mesopic conditions. When you look at the MTF uh, when compared with 
any other trifocal, you can see that the, the clean line that is the trinoar has much better outcome. You look at the step. I can. I think when you look at this uh, pattern, you you know what length it is, and when you look at the trinoa, you'll be surprised that there is uh, no step at all. When the first trinoa, uh, the the first trifocal come out, the line loss is about fifteen percent. Even with a better model, uh, the best one is still twelve percent line loss. Why? The trinova yield only 8% light loss. You need to know that every 1% has exponential effect. With the natural crystal lens for young people at 30 years of age, it is 95%. And trinova can yield 92%, which is really close to a natural crystal lens. Um, any other, the best so far is 88 that can yield a 12% loss. When you look at the light distribution, you can see that or with different pupil size, the, the, the graph, the, the, the light doesn't change. Uh, you can see a very good near at six millimeter pupil. You can have a very good intermediate. It dropped only a little bit at six millimeter pupils. Uh, not like any other that shift the light to the distance. When you compare Trinova here with our uh, three other kinds of trifocal, you can see that uh, with larger pupil, it directs the light into distance and uh, the intermediate and the near curve has dropped a lot. With light distribution on the trinova, it distributes 40% to distant, 30% to intermediate, and 30% to near. Uh, that is in photopic condition. With mesopic condition, it shifts to the distant only a little bit from intermediate from 30% to 25, uh, from distant 40 to 45, and near is still the same. This is a, when we compare the trinova with any other trifocal for the US Air Force resolution target test. When you look at the range of vision, you, when you look at different kind of, tri, of uh, trifocal, to see the, from the, the closest one to the intermediate one, some has only 20 centimeters of range. Yeah. Some about, and all of them never have more than 35 centimeters of, of visual range. But with Trinova, it continues from 38 centimeters to 80 centimeters, which gives you a 42 centimeter range of vision. One good thing that I really like is the, uh, the uh, not not only that it has a negative aesthericity of zero uh, uh, minus zero one point six five uh, one six five, it has a uh, like an e dot effect. What does it give you? It gives you a toilet to decentration. It enhances the depth of focus, sorry, and it has a good contrast sensitivity at dim light. So if you get the, the, the end result of not an emetropia, but close to it, the patient won't have any effect on that. Surprisingly, it has the best AB number um, in the market, much more than the, the first EDOF that you know. And oh, one of the things that oh, we worry about implanting uh, trifocal or any multifocal is the ankle kappa. Oh, anyone look at the ankle kappa or look at the topo 
before implanting the trifocal. I do look at the topo every time that before I decide uh, to implant the trifocal or multifocal because I need to look at the angle cover. If the angle cover is more than 0 0.5, uh, it, it is not good to implant uh, the multifocal on that patient because most of the multifocal or the trifocal, the central diameter is only one millimeters. That means it gives you the space of only 0 0.5 millimeters uh, tolerate to ankle kappa. When you look at the trinova over here, you have a central diameter of 1.4 millimeters that you uh, 0 0.6, a wider space of tolerance to ankle kappa. So with ankle kappa of, of less than uh, seven, uh, 0 0.7 millimeter, I'm still comfortable to implant the, the, the trinova. The main, uh, the main advantages of sinusoidal is the compensation effect of biometry measurement. It can uh, tolerate up to plus or minus uh, 0.75 diopters if you face a post-operative refractive surprise like, uh, like I did. I did uh, face the refractive surprise, but the, the patient surprised me that they can see 2020, they can see 2016, and it can tolerate a tilt, um, a minor tilt or a slight tilt, and a high ankle cover. Um, with plate haptic IOL, you have known for a long time that the disc for top here is much less than the, the C loop platform. Now they come in both non toric and toric version. With toric version, what I really like is the marker. I don't like the dot marker. I like the linear marker so I can visualize uh, the, the marker or on either the manual marking or the electronic marking. Maybe because I'm getting old, so I don't like the, the dot marker. And uh, the plate platform, you can rotate the, the lens uh, either uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, anyone in, in the room uh, has used the Aura, the, op, uh, the interoperative abrometer? Or, well, when you implant the, the toric lens uh, under Aura, sometimes it this doesn't read that you are in a perfect position. You need to rotate the lens. Uh, sometimes uh, even with, with the correct uh, axis, they, they told you to to move the lens clockwise. But when you move it a little bit clockwise, it says, no, you go back counterclockwise. With the, the C-loop uh, platform, you cannot do that. But with the plate haptic, you can do it really easy. Uh, we also did a study in 18 patients, uh, the total of 33 eyes, and we have a very good defocus curve, both monocular and binocular. Uh, most of, I think all of the patients we did the study is very happy. If you look at the defocus curve of, of Trinova, which is the dark green line, comparing with the, the uh, all other trifocal, you can see the continuous and almost no hump at all in the defocus curve. That surprised me. We also did a study, me and, and, and my colleague, me and my colleague did the study on the interoperative OCT to see anatomical platform different from any other platform 
or will it have any different from any other platform when performing in the real surgery? Now we implant the toric acrylic platform. You can see the posterior surface of the the IOL over here. and the postlay capsule over here. And after a while, after, after a while, you'll be surprised that the, the postlay surface of the platform come in close contact with the postulate capsule, which didn't happen in any other platform. Okay, on, on the top left, you can see that the postulate capsule begin to come in closer and closer to, to, the, to the IOL. You can see that the space is coming closer and closer. And on the bottom left, you can see that now the postlay capsule come in close contact with the IOL. can see over here that it come in close contact with the IOL. So, so we inflate or do the uh, stromal hydration at the side port and we push the postulate capsule away from the IOL. It will be like that for for only for only a moment, but then it coming closer and closer to the post postal surface of the IOL again. Over here, you can notice that the postal capsule will come in close contact with the IOL. can see over here, we do the inflation many times to push the, the, and the postulate capsule away from the postulate optic of the LL. And it's still coming back to, to get in contact with the LL. That surprised me. This is the, the the video showing that the postlay capsule come in close contact with the Trinova platform. That doesn't happen in any other platform. Let me show you. Oh, the others platform. How it looks like. This is the 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 C loop platform that mostly used all over the world. You can see that oh, the postulate surface of the optics and the the uh, the postulate capsule never comes in close contact. You can also see over here, this is the OCT from the most used platform. This is from in any other CLU platform. This is from the plate haptic platform that is not our Acrewa. This is the CLU platform.
you can see that the Hosili capsule never come in close contact with the LL. You can recognize the the the, the, the shape that of the C loop platform with the square edge. We did a questionnaire to ask our patient uh, how they like or dislike the lens. And the three months and, and six months, it show a very, a very satisfaction at both this ten near and intermediate. And uh, the, the, the side effect of glare and halo and this photosphere is, is very minimum. Let me show you one last thing that um, there's nothing can tell you more than real patient. We all we did or survey our real patient how they perform in their real life, and this is one of our a very happy patient that she she regained her career back. Uh, with contract, she's at the age of eighty and she make models. And when we look at the, the video, that, that she can perform her tasks, a very fine task at intermediate and near. And she used the, the latex glue. And so, so she asked, uh, we, we asked her uh, if she can read the, the text on the, on the latex glue. She could read without glasses. And when we asked her, where did she keep her glasses? He said she throw it all away. And she can differentiate or between color that that is really close. She can differentiate that. That means the con contrast sensitivity is still very, very good. She perform a very fine job. She make money for that. And at the age of 80, she can still perform a very fine job without glasses. And she, she gave me a box of models she made by herself. You can see that she can have the, the, the iPad over here, the iPhone over here. With a small text uh, from the iPhone, she can still see without any glasses at all. And she, so she eat an uh, iPad for breakfast. <laughs> So the, almost people, almost patients throw their glasses away because our 100% of feedback that they would suggest the LL2 and others and 100% doesn't need any glasses at all at the moment. And I don't have uh, adequate time to show two more patients who can perform their tasks at near and intermediate without any glasses that uh, regain their uh, juvenile life back. So in conclusion, the Trinova has a superior platform. It has the best light transmission. It has the highest AB number. It has the good MTF in all distance. It has the widest depth of focus and it has a, a better anatomical positioning against possibly capsule demonstrated by the interoperative OCT. What I really like is can tolerate a minor off-target refraction and the minimal tilting. 
with a wide angle camera, you can still implant this lens. So it is definitely, uh, definitely my choice of trifocal. Thank you.